anyway uh, though it is um, uh, not related here when the central leg says they used to anna, what is that uh, announce the rate on the 20th of february normally what we used to say we used to stay in office till 12 o'clock because first invoice generated after 12 o'clock must be with the new excise rate how we were doing at that time you tell me <laughs> we were doing now because 28th february morning a uh, budget uh, proposal uh, would have been presented in the parliament excise rate announcement have been made by five o'clock notification have come and we uh, we stayed back at the office we have made that the rate uh, changed rate into the system then we generated first invoice after 12 o'clock on the 28th of february that means first march first first invoice we did now it is required i think here it's not a big exercise as such so then the next very important question to badrinath sir directly if you were given a chance to frame, change or amend the GST, the present GST, no. what is that you delete and what is that you add and what is that you would like to rectify? See, uh, it, is not about, it is not about something that has to change or something that has to be rectified. Because legal issues will be there, right? Uh, just to repeat the same example, uh, there will be, there will be a, uh, I mean, whether uh, Kit Kat is a chocolate or a wafer will take years to settle down. But more on the operational side, you know, just to add to the previous one uh, in this context, we should look at more things from a ease of doing business perspective. As our friend Anil said, look, the job of the businessman is to do the business. But yes, not at the, co not at the cost of something else. Right? He should, he should be compliant with law. He should do the business, yes. But from an administration perspective, from a reporting perspective, as long as it, it supports the, e, the you know, ease of doing business, the, the maxim that all of us uh, speak about, I think we are fine. Because law is a very good piece of legislation that we have, right? It is, once again, let me tell you, it is not something we have invented, the law. We have largely copied it from the Canadian law, largely. Canada also has two levels of GST like we have, centre and state. There it is provincial and federal. Right? We've copied. We are learning from their experiences. We are learning from their experiences. So I'm sure we'll, uh, the teething troubles, right? It's, it's just three months old. You need to give it some time to be able to settle down. But from an issue or something which needs a rectification today, probably more, uh, you know, only in terms of the technology support that we have. Then everything is fine. There is nothing that really needs to change in the law per se. See, uh, I would like to share one of the information which I read on the internet. Malaysia, I think they have introduced the GST on uh, 1st of April 2015. Their entire economy ran, in, ran into utter chaotic condition. Lot of problem, their inflation, inflation shot up like anything. People started cursing the government. And their anti profiteering uh, uh, what is that authority? They booked uh, in a matter of two years uh, 56,000 cases. I was wondering in India whether such a thing will happen, but fortunately, here no such thing has happened. <laughs> yeah, till now. <laughs> till date. <laughs> so, it is really, I think, here uh, we are absorbing in a positive way. Maybe because somebody is making here and there some noises, uh, normally, you know, it will get echoed, relayed. So, that should be avoided. But uh, what the situation which uh, took place in Malaysia? I think Malaysia, the same party will not win election. Uh, people have decided we have to throw out these people uh, from the power. But here, such a situation is not there. Our inflation is in control. Maybe due to fear, uh, some people, you know, they are planning investment in uh, building house and all. They are just postponing. Just they want to observe and take decision. Excepting that, I don't think any, you know, dramatic event is happening in our uh, economy. It is still under very much, very much under control. That much I can say. Just to add to what he said, sir, we should be sensitive to one aspect here. The size of Malaysia versus the size of India. The size of business that happens in Malaysia versus the size of business that happens in India. It is very different. It is very, very, very different. I don't know if it is 100 times or 1000 times. I don't know that. Maybe if they know that, right? But here, from a, again, just getting back to the question that Anil asked me, right? From a change perspective, there are issues. I'm not saying that GST is, you know, hassle-free. There are, there are. But yes, one thing that at least in my limited experience that I can tell you, we have a fantastic team which hears the questions out to solve it. So it is up to each one of you, if you believe there is something that needs a change, stand up and 
pose that question pose that question yes the same question to prakash sir see um, same thing happened in 1947 when india uh, went on to draft constitution what india did understood the socio economic and political milieu and then searched for answers in different countries who had constitutions already we borrowed federalism from one country borrowed a tinge of unitary features from one country borrowed fundamental rights from us and go and so on see 70 years of administering fiscal statutes as a bank of rich experience we the officers have and for the first time in india a fiscal statute has been drafted in house in the sense only officers have drafted in house not been outsourced to any professional body to draft a law this is the first time and 70 years of experience we kept it before us and then search for the answers in different countries and he said rightly picked up on good good, good example of canada only two countries in the world have concurrent levy of gst first is canada second is india and all are single levy see why i am trying to uh, circumvent all these examples only to impress upon you that it is a document which has been drafted with a fantastic vision in mind with lots of experience what to delete what to add on what to modify only the time will give the answers when we experiment with this fiscal statute we survey the business we do domestic and export only then we'll come to know that in 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 order to f- has in the process of ease of doing business what all the nuances which i can tighten with what are the nitty gritty i should look into and then fine tune the model so therefore there is nothing like deleting or adding it is only an evolution of this particular law ultimately stand as a an epithet of supreme document to support and put it on the shoulder the ease of doing business anywhere in the world forget about in india anywhere in the world i'll i'll tell you one 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 particular hope i have in future one country will stand up and take the stock of the situation and say here is one gst law in the indian subcontinent let me pick up these domains because they are so beautiful and i'm sure about that so moving back to the next question the very from industry it has been with lot of criticism reverse charge mechanism the word rcm is pinching every industrialist world uh, mind so can we have the intention behind the rcm by department my murli krishna sir what was the main intention behind rcm is as simple as that <clears throat> it is not new to us even in a vat law we had a section 32 means whenever you make a purchase from an unregistered dealer means to say who is less than 20 lakhs who is not registered or let it be a, whatever the turnover if the taxable goods and been purchased by a registered person by be for example he is a urd unregistered person if i buying some goods from him that should suffer tax to bring the transaction to the net even in service tax even that is not a new thing i hope badri because i never practice service tax because now i am looking at the service tax issues so what is gst it's a goods and service tax it's a beautiful marriage between the services and goods <laughs> you got it means to say it's not new to the gst at all already we were doing that particular thing in the earlier laws only to see that to bring the compliance in a better way to bring the unregistered dealers to the fold and another uh, thing the rcm it is eating the many people do you know why once again it is an attitude i'll come back the big business people the big accounting whatever the companies and all that they have created a such a scary in the public mind or in the industrial circle if you are not registered we will not buy from you where he has to go see what we have said since he is not registered you if you make any purchase from that particular fellow you pay tax first anyhow you would have registered you would have paid the tax you got my point 
would have registered, you would have paid the taxes. That fellow would have remitted the taxes. I would have claimed the credit. Now I am trying to tell you, I pay the tax on my purchases, which is unregistered. When I sell, when I supply it once again, I will claim the credit back. See, what is the cut balagadenda the cut of the See, what is the big difference between buying from a registered dealer and paying taxes, buying unregistered dealer and paying taxes myself? I don't find any reasons in that. The biggest problem is that this has created a furor among the business people to say that to make the life easier. Whose life? The MNC companies, accounting company and the people who are there to make the life easier, make the life others miserable. You got it? How actually? That is the reason I think government for a period of time they thought because of so many reasons, not only economic, political reasons too. They said, okay, let, let us defer it till to 31-3-2018. But still some RCM is there. Yes. Only section 9.4 means if you buy from an unregistered dealer or unregistered person it has been uh, deferred. Whereas section 9.3, there is one section is there. It is some notified uh, services or goods are there. On such RCM still it is existing. Okay. That's the philosophy behind it. It is not new to the GST law itself. Uh, instead of uh, calling the intention behind uh, uh, RCM, we can, uh, I can slightly amend it like a reason behind RCM. Because in 1994, service tax was introduced, 1994. I was working as a financial advisor for one sugar company, Mysore Sugar Company. So then transporters, uh, service tax was levied on transporters. And they went on strike for 15 uh, days, almost more than 15 days. Sir. Then I was also one of the person, one of the petitioner to file, questioning the constitutional validity of reverse charge mechanism. <laughs> So then what happened, similarly, some 46 uh, uh, you know, uh, petitions have been filed and at last the Supreme Court has withdrawn to for one uh, hearing of that by, and in between uh, law was amended. So reverse charge mechanism has been uh, legalized. See here, there are certain areas, for example, uh, transporters and farmers, no government will have guts to tax them. That is the reason. That is the intention, not intention, that is the reason. They can never, you know, levy tax on agricultural commodity. In other countries, countries it is there. They will never levy tax on transporters. So, so reverse charge mechanism, that is how it originated. So here reverse charge mechanism, there are three categories. First is a, a purchase from unregistered person and specified service. Specified service is uh, mentioned in section 9, subsection 3 and uh, e-commerce operators. So e-commerce operators deferred till 31st March 2018. This is the background how reverse charge mechanism came to practice. See, actually, uh, it's a good question, Anil, <clears throat> especially for the students. Uh, there are two kinds of reverse charge mechanism. One is conceptual reverse charge mechanism Another one is related to the processes. Processes is the sense when you buy from an unregistered dealer, you pay it. That is a process. Conceptually is one Mr. Kumar Swami um, uh, you know, touched upon is GST council will notify certain goods and services. Whoever receives that goods and services will be paying the tax in reverse charge mechanism. Reverse charge mechanism in service tax act, there are two, partial reverse charge mechanism fully and reverse full reverse charge mechanism. Here, what is the concept and philosophy behind it? There are two aspects. One is difficulty in collecting the taxes because too many in numbers. And another one is the social welfare notion of the country, not to levy them. For example, mutual fund agents, LIC agents, Services rendered by LIC agent, mutual fund agent is under reverse charge mechanism. Why? Country looks at it in two angles. One is not to burden that mutual fund agent, which is a bread and butter for him, and then LIC agent. Who receives the services? The bank who, which manages mutual fund and the LIC, which is capable of paying the tax on behalf of this in reverse charge mechanism. Look at the beauty of this. It's a fantastic mechanism. It's a wonderful invention of having two you know, blades. One is fulfill the social welfare notion and obligation of the country, not to levy tax on the weaker section. They are very large in number. 
Second, fulfill the amicability of administering because the government cannot run behind these lakhs of people. There are lakhs of LIC agents, lakhs of mutual fund agents. So therefore, bring them under reverse charge mechanism. This is the concept. Second one, as Murali sir uh, said, that we had in VAT also, whoever buys from an unregistered dealer. All restaurants. Yes. Sir. Have you ever had? Yes. I have ordered, no? Yes. How fast it does and it gets the things back? No, no, no. Restaurant I'll come is back. different. No, no, I'll come back. Mm. On the idli beku, vade beku, puri beku, masal dosa beku, coffee beku, and dashna. Ishte mada dhaun. Satta barat. Correct, sir. Ah. Barat tala? Adhe taran, eh? No. Bande, bande. I'll come back. I'll come back. Adhe taran, eh? Program mada kondo, software bar kondo. Inga nganbe kashte. Namke nandre, no? I'll come back. See. I'll be back, I'll be back. Right? Right? If you want to be a good person, you want to be a good person, you want to be a good person. You want to be a good person, you want to be a good person. You want to be a good person. Sir, very important business of the businessman is to do business, not pay the tax. No, I'll come back. I'll come back. We have authorized a certain category of dealers to collect and you do your duty. That's it. We have not asked all the businessmen to do the job. Yes, if you want to do, you do it voluntary. Mandatorily, we said, if you have a turnover more than 20 lakhs of aggregate turnover, you have to get registered. That is the duty is doing back to the society. Ide nela, ide niru, ide ahara, gali, raste beko, charendi beko, aungu beko, nangu beko. नारी ये लिखा समाधर मरा कागा ला इल्ले इल्ला टैक्स कटले लान थे लिला इल्ले सर वन अदर थिंग आई टेक नॉर्मल काका शॉप नॉर्मल काका शॉप वेर दे वेर दे सेल बेकरी आइटम्स वेर दे सेल लेस पैक्ड लेस वेर दे सेल कुक कुल ड्रिंक्स वेर दे सेल जूस all the five things are taxed in a different rate. Yes, sir. Why a kaka shop vendor should know the tax of all the uh, uh, different tax rate of all the five sir, uh, different commodities? Sir, we are told, made it very clear. Hmm. Kaka shop, notice, sir. Angriyakak bandi dhera, naan first angriyak burti dhe. Angriyakak burti dhe kena department jain kelsa marta hai. I'll come back. The reason I'll simple, very clear. I'm a trekker also. I'm a very habitual into many activities. Unless until you know what is the beauty of trekking and uh, climbing a mountain, you will know, never know the sweetness of it. Similarly, if I had known the sweetness of that particular, I would have been there, not here. That's why he is there. You may think that Allah sir, Allah look, Allah sir, Allah business man, Allah sirlo. Because he knows the art of uh, doing a business, he knows art of doing that. Everybody will not do it. He is telling a bakery shop, okay. Bakery shop also, less than 20 lakhs, we are least bothered. Less than 20 lakhs, we are least bothered. Whether you collect tax, you want to pay tax, if you want to collect and pay tax, you register. Okay. He said, namkins, kurkure, so many drinks and all that. Who are supplying all that? Big people, wholesalers, not a small vendor. When he can do that, you won't believe, my dear friends, I'm telling you, just to demystify. Now you go to any medical shop. Do you know how the orders are taken? He comes with a pump top. Isn't it? He takes the orders. Keen. He will not take that particular data to there. The data transmits to that particular place. And tomorrow, by afternoon, even the medicines are delivered to that particular place. So that is a technological interface we have. Similarly, a kurkure, Pepsi, no, Atwa, Coca-Cola, no. On billing man kalasthane, wholesaler kundh maadthane. That is why I am trying to tell you, if one person does the technological interface, down the line the data can be downloaded. That's what we said, GST1, GST2, GST3. Likewise, the data transmits. That's not a problem at all. See, they are expressing, as I said in the morning, it's a basically attitudinal problems. They don't accept means they don't accept. Otherwise, ye go to any bakery, small vendors, we are least bothered, sir, I'm telling you. Only 20 lakh and above, please have a botheration. That's it. Sir, 20 lakhs and above, if you divide by 365 days, 5,555 rupees. Kaka shop vendor, you think he'll, <laughs> he'll do more than 5,555 rupees sales, sir, per day? He'll definitely do. I don't know.
to say more than certain things in that. Mm. I think I'm the less the corruption itself is there in the ground level, my dear friend. You definitely yes. I'll no, no, come I am trying to tell you. Later. If you would have been accounted each and every transaction, his turnover would have not five thousand five hundred per day. I think you can have accepted. Uh, definitely. Okay. Yes. Uh, just I want to supplement uh, with uh, my views also in this uh, uh, particular uh, instance example. See, uh, you are all student of uh, uh, MBA, I think. M -com. M -com. Okay, maybe you may pursue a good uh, career. Don't even think about a bakery shop and kurkure shops and all. <laughs> okay. Uh, you just aim for some MNC companies. See, in MNC company, there will be tight uh, internal control. Not, uh, not one individual will be allowed to, uh, you know, complete the uh, entire cycle of a transaction. It is not possible because it, is, it depends on the delegation of financial power, internal control. There are so many things are attached to that. See, what will happen if you go to MNC or even professionally managed company? Because I had worked for 30 years at, as a HOD for more than 25 years. See, there will be either SAP is implemented or Oracle applications where even your delegation of financial power, your approving power, that means authority and authentication of any transaction is built into the system. First, it is built into the organization structure.